good morning today we will go about we will talk about the respiratory system topic topic of our lecture is the respiratory system plan of the lecture first of all we will talk about phylogenesis it's only the genesis of respiratory system then general plan of structure of respiratory system functional characterization of upper respiratory tract of lungs of ethanus then we will talk few words about pleura and mediastinum so here you can see the phylogenesis of the uh, respiratory system in different animals and insects and worms fish so there are most of all types of breathing there are five types of breathing firstly is the diffuse then tracheal then skin and finally the pulmonary type of breathing in different types of life. Uh, when we're talking about ontogenesis of the respiratory system, uh, you can see that it starts to develop approximately at fourth week of the embryogenesis from an ectodermal tissue from the anterior head region and vaginates posteriorly to form olfactory pits which fuse with the endodermal tissue of the developing pharynx. An olfactory pit is one of the pair of the structures that will enlarge to become the nasal cavity. At about the same time the lung bud forms and the lung bud is a dome-shaped structure composed of tissue that begins from the foregut. Then, approximately at fifth, sixth week, starts the formation of the bronchial tree. Five, six months formation of the alveoles in the lungs. Seven months of embryonic of the <coughs> prenatal development final formation of the larynx and from six to nine months is formation of the bronchial tree and asinus. So organs of the respiratory system can be classified into the conducting zone and respiratory zone. The conducting zone includes organs which is responsible for respiratory passage that carry air to the site of gas exchange. Uh, these organs also filters, humidifies and warming air. So conducting zone is organs of conducting zones are organs uh, which start from the nasal cavity then nasopharynx, then larynx, trachea, bronchi, and uh, some parts of the bronchial tree till the respiratory zone organs, which are the place of gas exchange. So, conducting zone begin, uh, begins from the nasal cavity and ends in the respiratory zone, which composed of respiratory bronchioles, alveolar ducts, and alveolar sacs. Uh, in general, what are the functions of the respiratory system? Functions of organ of breathing. So, First of all, uh, remove of the inhaled foreign particles and 
foreign organism, olfaction, warming and humidification of the air, phonation, filtration of blood in the pulmonary capillaries, acting as a volume reservoir of blood, so accumulation of blood can happen in respiratory system, and some metabolic functions of the pulmonary tissue, except breathing the specific functions of the lungs are deposition of blood, regulation of the water salt metabolism, regulation of the pH, immune function, and also endocrine function. So the initial organ of respiratory system is external nose. External nerve con nose consists of bony part and cartilaginous part. The bony part is formed by nasal bone and maxillary process of the and frontal process of maxilla. That's the bony part and the cartilaginous part represent by cartilage which you can see in the picture cartilago nasi lateralis cartilago alaris major accessory nasal cartilage cartilage ala minor cartilage and cartilago septinase. So all this cartilage forms <coughs> the relief of the nose. The relief of the nose is changeable with the age uh, because during the age happens the enlargement of the volume of nasal cartilage and connective tissue between them. So enlarging of this volume during the life will cause that in more adult and old people the shape of the nose is somewhat bigger than in more young persons. So in general nose got radix dorsum, apex, ala, and base of the nose. The lower borders of ala is bounded by the nostril or nares. Uh, the external nose is the specific function of the human. They forms nostril and are responsible for the correct passage of the air. It's absent even in monkeys and shape and the size of the nose got different age and sex difference also ethnic difference and individually it's very variable. Actually, the plastic operation in the pla plastic operation of changing of the shape of the nose is most popular plastic surgery operation in the world. So, <coughs> after the external nose, we have nasal cavity. Nasal cavity is the structure in the region of the facial skull which function is to conduct the air, it's humifying, it's warming, moisturing and receiving all the smells. <coughs> in the nasal cavity can be distinguished vestibulum nausea and nasal cavity proper. The border between them is lumen nausea. 
in general the total length of the nasal cavity is 10 from 12 cm so it seems not so big <coughs> If we will talk about the bony structure which forms the nasal cavity, we have the superior, inferior, lateral and middle wall of nasal cavity. So you already studied it during your craniology topics, but I want to remind it to you. So the upper border upper wall of nasal cavity is formed by nasal bones then nasal part of frontal bone and cribriform plate of etmoid bone then inferior wall of nasal cavity is represented by palatine process of maxilla and horizontal plate of the palatine bone. Lateral wall of nasal cavity is formed by frontal process of maxilla, then etmoid labyrinth, perpendicular plate of palatine bone, inferior nasal concha, as you know it's the separate bone, and la lateral nabina of pterygoid process of the sphenoid bone. Uh, when we talk about middle wall of nasal cavity, we supposed that it's the nasal septum. The nasal septum, its bony part, is formed by vomer and perpendicular plate of etmoid bone and also some part of the nasal septum got cart uh, is formed by cartilago septinase uh, about blood supply of the nasal cavity the nasal cavity is very uh, vascularized and in the anterior and the anterior <coughs> region of the nasal cavity we have so-called Kisselbach plexus it's the cavernous plexus venous plexus with formation of the enlarged cavities in the mucous membrane of the nose it is situated from one centimeter from anterior part in the middle and uh, the nasal bleeding most often most often happens from this Kisselbach plexus so nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses So let's return to nasal cavity and paranasal sinuses. If you remember, the uh, in the nasal cavity we have three nasal concha: superior, middle, and inferior nasal concha. Between them, we have superior, middle, and inferior nasal meatus. And paranasal sinuses. are the cavities 
inside the frontal, sphenoid, etmoid, and maxillary bones, which open into the nasal cavity. The paranasal sinuses is lined by same mucosa as nasal cavity and performing the same functions. So, mo mo moisturing, warming, cleaning, modifying of the air, and the same as nasal cavity, they can get infected and we have sinusitis in such case. <coughs> so, I want to remind you once more about the communications of the nasal cavity with paranasal sinuses. So, in superior nasal meatus opens the sphenoid sinus and posterior etmoidal cells. Middle nasal meatus receives frontal sinus, maxillary sinus, anterior and middle etmoidal cells. And finally, the inferior nasal meatus does not communicate with any paranasal sinuses, just a nasal lacrimal duct opens there. So, larynx is the next organ of respiratory system. But, you have to remember that after the nasal cavity we have the nasopharynx which is one of the organ of respiratory system so the nasopharynx and also oropharynx participate in providing of the air in these organs in, in these parts of pharynx, uh, we have lymphoepithelial urine of the Valdeir spiragov, which consists of tonsils. I want to remind you these tonsils, they are unpaired and paired. Paired are pharyngeal, uh, unpaired are pharyngeal and lingual. And paired tonsils are palatine and tubal tonsils. Here you can see the tubal tonsil and in the root of the tongue there is the lingual tonsil. Pharyngeal tonsils situate near the upper wall of the nasopharynx. So don't forget that nasopharynx and oropharynx also provide the air from the nasal cavity till the next organ of the respiratory system, which is larynx. So, function of the larynx is produce speech provides and open airway breathing and <coughs> also larynx participate in mechanism to road air in food into the proper channels because in the oral pharynx we have crossing of the respiratory tract and alimentary tract and if there will be some speech during eating the food can easily pass into the larynx except providing except entering the esophagus that's why you have to be very attentive when you take a meal so the <coughs> structure of larynx is the similar to the structure of the locomotor apparate. It has skeleton, it has ligaments and it has muscles. Skeleton of the larynx represent by cartilage. Cartilage of the larynx are unpaired and paired. Unpaired epiglottis 
steroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage. Pet A. Arotenoid, corniculate and cuneiform. Here you can see the structure of the larynx and here you can see the two joints of the larynx which are cricotaroid cartilage and cricotaroid cartilage and cricoarotenoid cartilage. So moving in of in this cartilage helps us to produce the sound. Ligaments. Ligaments of the larynx are skeletal and proper ligaments of the larynx. Skeletal ligaments, tirohyoid, heoepiglottic, tiroepiglottic, cricotaroid, cricotracheal, cricopharyngeal, cricoarotenoid, so posterior. So these ligaments connect larynx with the near located structure. And proper ligaments of the larynx a ligamentum vocale and ligamentum vestibulare. These ligaments performing the main functions for the sound production. Muscles of the larynx can be classified into the constrictors, dilators, <coughs> and muscles that change the tension of the vocal ligaments and because of this change of tension we can have voice production in this slide you can see these muscles So from these names you can see that arotenoid, arotenoid, arotenoid. So you see that most of these muscles responsible for changing of the position of arotenoid cartilage. So when we will make the cross section of the larynx we will see the vestibule, interventricular part, and infraglottic cavity. So first, second, and third region. Uh, these regions are separate by paired plica which are plica vestibularis, they are false plica, we can call them false, and plica vocalis, which are true vocal folds, and between plicas are the laryngeal ventricles or morgani ventricles. Here are they in the slide. The voice production of the larynx happen due to the vocal plicas, due to these structures. It's the mucomuscular elastic structure. So mucous membrane, muscular tissue and elastic fibers are there. 
between these plica we have the rima glottis between these plica we have the rima glottis when we talking Uh, the air will exit from the lungs under the pressure and because of this happens the vibration of this rima glottis and uh, resonation of our speech happens due to the nasal cavity, pharynx and paranasal sinuses. That's why when you have some rhinitis or hemorrhitis or some other inflammation of this of any of these structures, your voice is changed. And the type of voice is depend from the length, thickness, and tension of the vocal folds. That's why the voice of the males and females and each voice, each voice is unique because all of us have different structures of the vocal folds. Here you can see cavity of the larynx and here you can see rima glottis and here are they are ventricle of the larynx. So the skin glottis glottis is the space between vocal cords, laryngeal muscle control length and size of opening by moving of the arotenoid cartilage as i mentioned above the arotenoid arotenoid so all these muscles most part of these muscles attach to arotenoid cartilage and sound is produced by the vibration of the vocal cords during the exhaling of the air Here you can see the picture which observing in the laryngoscopy is visual examination of the larynx and here you can see how the vocal folds are look like. Right and left vocal cords <clears throat> so next part of our lecture is trachea so larynx continues in the trachea and in thorax trachea divides into two main or primary bronchi so the trachea got cervical part and thoracic part it consists of from 60 to 20 c-shaped rings of hyaline cartilage joined by fibroelastic connective tissue so this is not o-shaped cartilage but c-shaped cartilage The trachea is flexible for bending but stays open during the breathing and even during when you not breathe. So here you can see the cross section C shape cartilage and tracheal muscles and connective tissue in the posterior border of the trachea. Why so? Because posteriorly of the trachea passes esophagus and 
to an esophagus transmit bolus. This structure of the trachea happens to provide the bolus for by enlarging of the esophagus. So <coughs> The holotopy of the trachea is situated in the region of the neck and in the thoracic cavity. Skeletotopy from C6 till T5. In the region of the T5, we have the bifurcation of the trachea. And anteriorly to trachea is thyroid gland. Anteriorly to the trachea are infrahoid muscles and arc of iota. Posteriorly of the trachea situate the esophagus. So lungs. It's the main organ of gas exchange. In the lungs, we have the, there are, it's the paired organ, and we have left lung and right lung. The main bronchi and vessels entering and exiting the lungs from the their middle surface. This surface got the name mediastinal surface because it faced to the mediastinum. So, in general, lungs got apex of the lungs and surfaces which are mediastinal surface, costal surface which is faced to the ribs, and diaphragmatic surface which closely connect to the diaphragm and on the medial or mediastinal surface of the lungs we have the place where the main bronchi and vessels entering and exiting the lungs so because of the processes of gas exchanging in the lungs uh, the pulmonary artery entering the lungs and pulmonary vein exiting the lungs the same as main bronchi entering the lungs and if you will see these structures got the name helium of the lungs and they are different in right and left lung so in the left lung you can see that artery uh, in all, in some books, in some pictures, you will see that the pulmonary artery is blue in color because pulmonary artery trans transporting the non-oxygenated blood because it's the lesser circle of blood circulation. About this you will study during your uh, cardiovascular system classes. So remember, pulmonary artery transmit deoxygenated blood. That's why in the picture it's the blue in color. Pulmonary artery, then bronchus, main bronchus, and finally pulmonary veins. Pulm pulmonary veins transmits the highly oxygenated blood. That's why <coughs> there are red in color in the pictures so in the left lung we have ABV artery bronchus and veins artery is most superiorly then bronchus and finally veins somewhat inferior and in the right lung we have BAV bronchus sedate superiorly then pulmonary artery So differences between left and right lung. Also differences is that left lung got two lobes 
right lung got three lobes. These lobes is separated by fissures. In left lung there is only oblique fissure. In right lobe there are oblique and horizontal fissure. That's why the right lung is somewhat bigger on the left lung because of the heart. So the lobes divide into the segments. In the superior lobe of the left lung, we have apical, posterior, anterior, superior lingual, and inferior lingual segments. In the oblique, in the inferior lobe, apical, medial basal, anterior basal, lateral basal, and posterior basal. These are the segments of the left lung. The segments of the right lung in the superior lobe. There are apical, posterior and anterior in the middle lobe. There are lateral and middle in the inferior lobe. There are apical, medial, basal, anterior basal and lateral basal. So in general there are <coughs> 10 segments in each lung. In this picture you can see the these segments and in this picture you can see the difference between right and left and left main bronchus so the right main bronchus is somewhat vertical it's longer it's somewhat narrow the right lung uh, the right main bronchus excuse me the left main bronchus mostly horizontally it's more horizontally that's why the foreign substances which will pass through the hemoglobin most often can be found in the right main bronchus. So then bronchi start to develop into the few times bronchi of first order in this picture there are main bronchi then each of the main bronchus divides into lower bar bronchi the lower bar bronchi are the bronchi of the second order and each of the lobar bronchi divides into the segmental bronchi. So segmental bronchi are the bronchi of the third order. After this, the segmental bronchus, here you can see segmental bronchus, divides into the subsegmental bronchus approximately five generations they divide dichotomically dichotomically means divides into two fourth third, fifth and sixth dichotomically into two subsegmental bronchi then 
small subse smaller subsegmental bronchi divides approximately into 15 generations and finally it losing their cartilages so in the picture you can see that the bronchus the cartilage is present but from that time when cartilage is absent we calling this structure bronchiole so and finally all these divides into the terminal bronchioles and all structures which divides from the ten terminal bronchioles got the name asinus asinus the structural functional of the structural functional unit of the lung is asinus and it's all structures which begins from one terminal bronchiole which structure begins from one terminal bronchiole three or eight orders of respiratory bronchioles alveolar ducts and alveolar sacs and separate alveoles so structural functional unit of the lung is asinus all structures all respiratory bronchioles all alveoles and alveolar ducts which begins from one terminal bronchial you have to memorize this and the respiratory bronchioles also divides dichotomically dichotomically means into two In this slide you can see the asinus once more. So difference between bronchus and bronchiol is absence of cartilage in the bronchioles. If you will see on alveoles through microscope you can see that they are surrounded by elastic fibers they are interconnected by the alveolar pores and inside their cavity we have alveolar macrophages which responsible for protection of the lungs and which killing the foreign substances which removing the foreign substances also if you, you will see in this picture you can see the structure of the air gas barrier which consists of the way which is the place where process of changing between oxygen and carboxygen in the lungs happen so in the pore from the side of alveol it is formed by alveolar side from this of the first type from the side of the capillary it is formed by basal membrane of the capillaries and basal lamina of alveolar epithelium, capillary endothelium, alveolar endothelium, and basal lamina. So only the changing between alveoles and capillaries, gas exchanging happens only in the region of the air gas barrier. also present surfactant what is surfactant the for preventing for preventing of the closing of, of the alveolar walls
we have special substance as surfactant which is covers the internal surface of the alveoles and preventing the closing of the alveoles and preventing of the collapsing of the lungs this biological active substance consists of lipids consists of some chemical elements and prevent the collapsing of the alveoles you have to remember it because uh, sometimes just after birth the, especially if the birth was before nine months of pregnancy for example during the six months of pregnancy it's caused uh, that the baby not able to breathe by himself because the atelectic atelectic lungs because surfactant was not formed yet and lungs are not able to open when the kid try when the baby trying to make him the first breathe in so air gas barrier surfactant you have to remember about it so pleura pleura it's the serous layer of the lung it consists of parietal and visceral layers visceral or visceral pleura closely connected with the pulmonary tissue and enters in the fissures it is also from the pulmonary ligament which pass from the root of the lung into the diaphragm to the diaphragm the visceral pleura got special villi which produce the serous fluid uh, the serous fluid prevents frictions between parietal and visceral pleura and what antibacterial function in the region of the root of the lung the parietal pleura transforming into the visceral pleura the visceral pleura transforming into the parietal pleura the, palate, the parietal pleura closely connected with the walls of the thoracic cavity and if we will look in microscopy we will see the small pores small foramens which absorb the serous fluid into the lymph capillaries so the amount of this serous fluid is not so big and in some pathological disease the enlargement of the volume of circulating pleural fluid can cause some additional problems during this disease <clears throat> between parietal pleura and visceral pleura there is the pleural cavity which is closely connected which is closed sac in the thoracic cavity the pleural sinuses in the place of transforming 
of the one part of parietal pleura into another part could some pleural sinuses which is costa diaphragmal sinus costa mediastinal sinus and phrenico-mediastinal sinus so let's talk about mediastinal Mediastinal is the complex of the organs of the thoracic cavity which situate between two pleural sacs. So, in other words, the mediastinal is the is formed by organs of thoracic cavity except lungs. Contents of the thoracic cavity except lungs, organs and vessels everything except lungs you have to memorize this so mediastinum according to the classification there are superior mediastinum and inferior mediastinum the border between superior and inferior mediastinum is the imaginary line, imaginary line which provided through the angle of the sternum till the intervertebral disc approximately between fourth and fifth thoracic vertebras. Imaginary line between angle of sternum and intervertebral disc, horizontal imaginary line. Those structures which are superiorly these lines are organs of superior mediastinum and those organs which are inferiorly there are organs of inferior mediastinum. So in inferior mediastinum we also subdivide few mediastinums anterior, middle and posterior. The anterior mediastinum boundary by posterior surface of the sternum and anterior surface of pericardium. So all structures which sit between these structures are the structures of anterior mediastinum. Then middle mediastinum between anterior and posterior surface of the pericardium and posterior mediastinum between posterior surface of mediastinum and between anterior surface of vertebral column. So superior mediastinum, just superior mediastinum and inferior mediastinum can be subdivided into the anterior, middle and posterior mediastinum. So in the organs of superior mediastinum We can see the thymus, arc of aorta and its vessels, <coughs> vagus nerve, phrenic nerve, sympathetic trunk, thoracic duct and cervical portion of the esophagus. Ah, then in the inferior mediastinum, in anterior mediastinum, there are lymphatic nodes in the middle mediastinum. Correspondingly, we have heart and pericardium, bifurcation of the trachea and main bronchi correspondingly, and we have bifurcational lymph nodes. Posterior mediastinum includes the thoracic part of the descending aorta, azygous and hemiazygous veins, right and left sympathetic trunk, vagus nerve and splanchnic nerve, thoracic duct, 
thoracic portion of the esophagus and lymphatic nodes. Of course, now these structures is not familiar to you, you did not heard about them, but when you will study some organs or vessels of the thoracic cavity, you will obligatory tell in which mediastinum they are passed. So this topography you will tell about the in which mediastinum it will pass. That's why you have to memorize the, this classification of the mediastinum superior inferior and inferior subdividing into the anterior middle and posterior one. The most often examination of the organs of thoracic cavity for the upper portion of the respiratory organs it's scopy you can observe the nasal cavity you can observe the larynx you can observe the main bronchi and trachea <coughs> but for the organs of thoracic cavity the most often is chest x-ray examination here you can see the lungs here you can see the small white colors which are bronchi and vessels and here you can see that in the peripheral part they are mostly disappearing not visible because cartilage mostly absent there. Here you can see the arc of aorta, here you can see the heart shadow. So all this you will have to know how to identify this or that structure. So lungs can be visible here. And one more very important, very terrible problem is smoking. The smoking, and here you can see the cross section of the lungs with the carbon patches, with the cancer of the right lung. So you see how the lungs of the smokers look like because nicotine and other chemical substances stopping and paralyzing the movement of the ciliary epithelium which covering inside the surface of the trachea and mean bronchi and due to this moving of the of these cilia the foreign substances, the dust and some other structures will evacuate from the lungs till the nasal cavity and then due to cough you will remove it through your organism. When you paralyzing this villi, all these structures stain in the lungs and of course is the formation of some carbon patches, of some cancers and a lot of diseases that's why don't smoke thank you for your attention goodbye